I'm no longer dropped. I was able to get homeowner's insurance. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to give you an update on this. And to be honest, I was sweating bullets there for a little while because when it seems like your only option is to get citizen's insurance, which is the insurance of last resort here in Florida, sometimes it feels like you might not be able to get any coverage because even citizens sometimes won't give you coverage without meeting certain requirements. But usually that's with houses, not with condos. And since I live in a condo and most of my building is already insured through the master policy, I was able to get a policy through citizens, guys. But just because I was able to get that policy doesn't mean everything is A-OK. -okay. And I want to go over some of the problems that I'm facing and other people are facing as well when it comes to this and make people aware of what's going on. Because I think on this current trajectory of where we're headed with homeowners insurance, the huge problem that we're having, and it's not just in Florida, but Florida is definitely the worst so far, um, between property insurance and property taxes, I think this is gonna, this could be enough to literally bring down the entire housing market, guys, because these two expenses alone are becoming more expensive than people's mortgages, especially if you live in uh, cheaper areas, because you can have a mortgage for five, six, seven hundred dollars a month if you live in an inexpensive area. And I can almost guarantee somebody like that probably has a higher property insurance and property tax bill than your actual mortgage per year. So let me give you an idea of what was happening. So I got notified earlier this month, in case you missed that, that last video, you can go check it out. This is the one here on the screen. But I was notified that my uh, homeowner's insurance policy was not gonna be renewed with Edison Insurance. I reached out to my insurance broker, and by the way, thanks to everybody who reached out to me. Uh, a few of you wrote me emails, shared information with your insurance brokers, and everything like that. And I actually called a couple of them to try and uh, see what we could do. But my guy that I've worked with for a few years now was able to uh, renew me with Citizens. I was paying about $1,100 a year or so with Edison. It might have been like $1,300, I can't remember. Pretty inexpensive, right? And then they said, okay, we're not covering you at all anymore. And so my insurance guy was looking around and said, it's only gonna be citizens. Nobody else is gonna cover you. He checked a few other ones first to make sure, but nobody would cover us except for citizens. And when I got my original quote, which I'll put up on the screen here, originally they wanted $3,566, guys. And all of the coverage here is basically the same coverage I had with Edison, and that's what citizens wanted to charge me. And I was like, you gotta be out of your mind. Like, I'm supposed to pay triple for, you know, the same coverage? And usually when people switch to citizens, it almost always goes down, it never goes up, you know? That's why we had this new law here in Florida where if you have citizens and you're now being offered insurance that's within 20% of the cost of citizens, if it's 20% or less more expensive, you need to take it. You cannot have citizens anymore. But when citizens is your only option and you don't have this, you don't have any negotiating power whatsoever. You're forced with taking this. And when I saw this, I was really upset, guys, because I'd be forced to pay triple and get nothing extra in return. What I did is I told him, my insurance guy, I said, listen, at this point, you know, even with the coverage I have here, it's basically like having no coverage. You know, having $30,000 worth of replacement value coverage, I can self-insure, guys. I have the money saved to be able to pay for that myself, you know? So having this insurance policy isn't really doing me any good. So what I told him to do is to just strip it down to the most bare bones policy possible so that way I can just comply with my mortgage. Because if you don't have insurance, it'll be reported to your mortgage company and then your mortgage company will put on a forced place insurance policy on your behalf and you'll be forced to pay for that and it will be much more expensive probably than this citizen's quote that I got and you're not even covered by it. It just covers to pay off your mortgage, guys. That's it, in case something happens. You know, you basically have no coverage and you pay out the wazoo for it. I said, you know what? Just lower my coverage to the bare minimum that I can possibly get, you know, the cheapest of the cheap, 
and I'll just take my chances, you know, because you're only insuring your inside four walls when you live in a condo. That is one benefit of living in the condo is I don't have to pay, you know, a huge insurance policy, right? I already pay that through my monthly HOA dues. So long story short, I was able to get the policy back down to close to that $1,100 mark. As you can see here, I lowered it down to $1,131 for the year is my new cost. But as you can see by my coverage here, guys, I have like practically no coverage. This is just, you know, a piece of paper saying I have insurance, which will do practically nothing for me in the event I actually need it. You know, $10,000 of dwelling coverage, $2,000 of loss of use, uh, 10,000 personal property. The only one that's any, any sort of significance here is the $100,000 personal liability which that seems to be the minimum because that's what they all have it seems like so to me it's basically like being uninsured here you could call me i would be what you would call underinsured right i'm one of those people like when you hear about underinsured losses i mean people have way less insurance than they probably should have whenever there's a disaster and they don't have enough insurance to pay for a new house and all of this but like I said, this only covers the inside four walls for me. So I'm willing to self-insure. I'm willing to pay for that full renovation in worst case scenario myself. I will pay for that. I don't need an insurance company to pay for it. So all I need is a piece of paper saying I have insurance so I don't get in trouble with my mortgage servicer is basically what I need at this point. You know, one thing we're seeing a lot these days is are all these data breaches. All these companies are getting hacked and your personal data that is with these companies is literally getting stolen and sold to data broker companies that will then turn around and sell your data to the highest bidder on the internet. And I, for one, I'm a pretty private guy. I don't want my information out there like that and I don't want people to just be able to access all my personal information with a keystroke so I recently partnered with a company called delete me and what they do is they remove your personal information from all these data broker websites that are out there that will sell your information to people so if you value your online privacy and if you don't want just anybody gathering your personal information sign up for a delete me account today my link is down in the description I have it right here on the screen and get 20% off your order Order today. But this is not quite a success story, guys, because even though I was able to get insurance, think about this. I have less coverage for the same price I was paying before. So that's already negative number one. And in the event I ever actually need this insurance, it's not really going to help me out a whole lot financially, right? So that's kind of like the trick here with people getting insurance is you're not really getting the, the insurance you really need. And if you really want to get the amount of coverage that you probably should have, you're going to have to pay far more and it's not going to be worth it for most people. So when something actually does happen, you know, if you can't afford the additional expenses right, because you're basically self-insuring here with a policy like this then people are going to be in trouble guys people are going to be losing their homes because they're not going to have the money to make the necessary repairs or to cost to rebuild now the good news is i got insurance and i didn't have to get a forced place policy so very good on that and the other good thing is i shouldn't have to worry about getting dropped anymore because Citizens is the insurance company of last resort, so they should not be dropping me because there is no other alternative. Maybe in the future, if there are more alternatives like we're supposed to have, that's what all these new insurance laws are supposed to do here, right? Is bring more insurance companies back to the state of Florida. And you're seeing this happen a little bit in some areas, but down here in South Florida, especially in Miami-Dade, you're not seeing insurance companies come back. Like they are still fleeing this area like no tomorrow, guys, because the fraud and the lawsuits here are rampant. So it is good to have a policy with citizens from the aspect of citizens cannot actually go out of business. And I don't know how many people know this, but citizens will never technically run out of money, guys. Like if there's a disaster big enough that hits the state of Florida and enough people with citizens get hit and they run out of their reserves and their reinsurance is gone, they have to pay out all their money on insurance claims. They have the legal ability to make what's called an assessment on insurances all over the state of Florida. So if they come into a shortfall, everybody throughout the entire state 
that pays any kind of insurance is going to have to pay for it. So the good news is I don't have to worry about not having insurance. The bad news is if there's a disaster anywhere in the state of Florida, we're all going to be paying for it, including me. I could see this stupid $1,100 policy go back up to the $3,500 in, in that worst case scenario, and I'm just paying for a piece of paper. I don't really have any real coverage, you know? So you can see how that would be problematic, and it's not a really good position to be in. And one of my viewers that was kind enough to write me after the last insurance video, his name is Jacob, he told me that he owns an investment property here in Florida, and he also has citizens on that property. They're gonna increase his insurance premium to whatever they feel like because it's not a primary residence, because this is an investment property that he might be looking at his insurance, you know, doubling or tripling or whatever they feel like doing just because it's not his primary residence. And he says he doesn't even have regular insurance with them. He just has a supplemental liability and accident and fire, but no wind policy because the property's paid off. In order to keep giving him a lower rate, they sent him documents that saying, hey, you have to prove that you live here, and if you don't, we're jacking up the rate. And he told me that maybe he's gonna consider going without insurance at all, guys. And this is what it's coming to now with properties here. And it's not just Florida, guys. I've named numerous accounts in previous videos of people in Colorado seeing massive increases, people in Missouri seeing increases, people in Louisiana, people in South Carolina, North Carolina, California, Arizona. It's creeping into everywhere. And before you know it, it's gonna be coming to your state if it hasn't hit you already. Because what these insurance companies are now doing is they're trying to spread their losses, right? They're trying to uh, mitigate their risk by charging everybody more, even if you live in a less risky area. You gotta remember guys, insurance companies are for-profit organizations. They are not in the business of giving hugs and kisses. They want to make money. And this is their newest strategy, okay? They're gonna charge people that live in uh, very low risk areas more to pay for people that live in higher risk areas. And they're charging us that live in the higher risk areas way more. It's not like, oh, just because you live in a high risk area, you're getting away with murder here. No, guys, people here are getting slammed with major increases. I just showed you what they wanted to increase mine to just to have a bare bones policy. And now I stripped it down to practically nothing just to save some money. And to be quite honest with you, if I didn't have a mortgage, I would go without insurance. The problem is, is more and more condos now are starting to require that you have insurance on your condo, even if you will have the place paid off. You don't even have the option in many cases anymore to go without insurance if you want to be in compliance with the HOA. Now, how heavily that's gonna be enforced is gonna be different depending on the building. Like, for our building, so far, what I've seen, they'll just send out a memo telling everybody, hey, you have to send us the policy. But well, I don't know what would happen if you didn't, you know? But I'm sure there's lots of HOAs out there that are gonna be very strict on this and can start fining you if you don't comply. So not only are property taxes and insurance gonna be taking down this housing market, guys, but one thing that's been lingering in the background that we've been kind of waiting to see what's gonna happen with its effect on real estate is short-term rentals. Well, we don't have to look any further than Palm Springs, California right now to see what happens to a real estate market when they cap how many short-term rentals can be available in any given area. Because that's what they did over there. And guess what's happening? Real estate values in Palm Springs are plummeting. Check out this story, man. This is just insane what's going on. And I'm not surprised either, right? Because so many people in these very touristy areas, Palm Springs, a touristy area, and people wanna go there and stay in Airbnbs and all of this, and people speculated, you know? This is what happens when the housing market is built on speculation. You get all these feverish purchases, people thinking they're gonna be Airbnb millionaires. They buy these crazy expensive houses to rent out, only to have the, the law cap them out, you know, a couple years later and make it so you can't do Airbnb anymore, which makes your house significantly less valuable now. There's even a YouTube star that they chronicled in this story. I don't know who this person is, but maybe some of you guys know. Uh, his name or her name, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. Luan Palomera, okay? 
they paid one and a half million dollars for a vacation home in Palm Springs. It says today he'd be lucky to get one million for that home, guys. So literally that house has dropped 50% in value in two years because it's no longer eligible to be an Airbnb. Think about that. Think about <laughs> how much that hurts somebody financially. Now you could argue that somebody that can afford a million and a half dollar house can probably afford a hit like that. And that might be true. But the point of it is that this can come to a town and city near you. You know, this is starting to happen in more and more cities across America. Dallas, Texas recently banned short-term rentals in all their residential neighborhoods. Uh, New York City is doing this. Now you're seeing smaller cities like Palm Springs do it. And it's changing the game, guys. Not only are prices falling, but the sales in the area are way down, which is probably more just a, also a product of this current market because we know that sales are in the toilet across the board everywhere right now. And they're saying that homes are sitting on the market for months and months and months on end over there now. And there's many people that are now selling their home for a loss that bought their house a couple years ago in Palm Springs. It's becoming a two-sided argument, just like it is in most areas where you have the residents saying, hey, we're sick of this. We want our community back. We're tired of having parties next door all the time and having all the riffraff that comes with the short-term rentals. You know, we're tired of not knowing our neighbors. And then of course you have the investors that just want to, you know, milk these properties for all they're worth and, you know, make the max amount of dollar and could care less about the community. Well, that's why the community always wins because the community are the people who are going to be there through the thick and thin. And guess what? The community are the people who make the rules, guys. These investors are never going to win when it comes to you versus the community because you're not there and they are. And that's the biggest difference. And we're starting to see people take their communities back with this. And it's not even just Palm Springs. Like I said, other places are cracking down on this. LA is also cracking down on it. And what they've done recently is they're making it so that you need to have a license to uh, rent out your primary residence for six months out of the year. Okay, and you, the maximum you can rent it out for is 120 days per calendar year. So it sounds like forget about investing in Airbnbs over here. You know, you'll be lucky if you can get a license to rent out your primary residence while you're not using it. Basically like a second home sort of deal. But what Palm Springs did instead is they said, well, what we're going to do is we're just going to cap the amount of short term rentals that can be allowed in any given neighborhood. And in 2022, they made it so that no more than 20% of any given neighborhood could be a short-term rental. And if you want to get a permit and your, your neighborhood's over the limit, tough luck. You're going to have to just wait until a spot becomes available. So you're going to have to be on a waiting list and see when you can get that. Maybe never. So the problem is also that if you had one of these licenses before this ordinance kicked in, you were grandfathered in, but by default, what it does is it made most of the neighborhoods already way over their capped limit and they're not renewing people's licenses. So say you have an Airbnb house in Palm Springs and you had that license before this ordinance took effect and now you want to sell your house to somebody else, they're, that license is not going to transfer to the new buyers. You can't market this as, oh, this is a licensed Airbnb property, which is what gives it all its value, right? That's why people are buying it for investment. So now that it has lost that appeal, the property values there are plummeting. They talked to a real estate agent over there that even had a client who died that had the rental license, okay? And when that person's brother took over the house, the renewal of the license was still denied because the city looked at that as a change of ownership even though it was just an inherited house doesn't matter no more airbnb license for you For anybody who followed my road trip, I was in Palm Springs for a day on my road trip. It was the last stop until I got to uh, Manhattan Beach. I didn't care for it at all, guys. It was extremely hot, extremely dry. Even at nighttime, it was like well over 100 degrees. I thought it sucked, to be honest. I would never want to go back there. But it seems like a lot of people like it, especially if you're into golf. And 
I don't know who wants to play golf in that kind of heat, but uh, yeah, people like it. They talked to another real estate agent over there. This is what he said. He goes, we don't even bother hosting open houses anymore in, for listings that are in capped neighborhoods because nobody shows up. So literally, the only reason most people are even there to buy these houses is to speculate and turn it into a rental property, guys. That's, that's kind of like a reflection of what's happening nationwide with all of our real estate. And that's why this is such an important story because this is a preview of what's to come. As more and more local cities and counties start to adopt their own rules surrounding short-term short rentals, and if that's what gave the whole area all this massive value, you're gonna see real estate values tank in many other areas too, especially combined with these ridiculous property taxes and homeowners insurance rates. There's a lot of things working against the housing market right now. This real estate agent had a client that paid $1.1 million for a house there. They spent an additional 300 grand on renovations. And so that's 1.4 million on the house for anybody who's keeping track. And now they can't even sell it for a million. So they're saying, oh, look at the bright side. There's plenty of great deals out there now if you're looking in Palm Springs. But the, the caveat is you have to be looking to live here. Well, like I just said, uh, if you're like me and you don't like the ridiculously hot desert heat, I don't know why anybody would be wanting to move there because that'd be one of the last places I would ever think about moving to, guys. I'd rather live back in the cold and deal with the snow than live there. I mean, that's how much I did not like it. And then they talked to a different real estate agent who's also a speculator, and I'm sure you guys are going to love hearing this story. He bought a house for $1.8 in March of 2022 for Airbnb, thinking I'm going to get rich off of Airbnb, right? Well, now he wants to sell the house, guys. He listed it for 1.725 million, okay? No takers. He slashed the price down to 1.595 million and still hasn't found a buyer after more than a year on the market. Think about that. More than a year trying to sell this house has slashed the price well below what he paid for it. This guy is hemorrhaging money. That's what's happening now to speculators. People that thought, oh my God, I'm gonna jump on this Airbnb gravy train and I'm gonna become the next world's millionaire. Clearly, that's not happening. Now you're gonna be the, come the next world homeless once you can't make your mortgage payment anymore and you lose all this money. And to top it all off, the neighborhood that this guy's house is in, the neighborhood is called Gene Autry, okay? And it has the longest waiting list out of any other neighborhood for these Airbnb applications with 32 applications in limbo. So there's 32 people ahead of him that are wanting to get the Airbnb license and they can't because they're over their cap. And you know what I say, guys? I say good for Palm Springs for doing this. You know, good for them for turning it back into a neighborhood. And also what they're doing is they're helping housing come back down to earth, right? They're revealing the true value of what people are willing to pay for these houses once it can no longer be this speculative investment. I guarantee you guys, if there's some kind of law passed on the federal level or even states start doing stuff like this, but I think it's gonna be happening mostly at the local government level, this is gonna tank real estate values in a lot of different areas. But you gotta look at it like this. This is just bringing down the value of the home down to what it actually should be worth when the home is not some crazy investment property that's supposed to generate 10 grand a month, right? When it's just a place to live like it was intended to be when it was built, now it is worth significantly less because the only person interested in buying that is somebody who wants to live there. Another neighborhood over there in a uh, the second half of 2022, they had 42 sales with a median sale price of 908,000, okay? With 38 days on the market. And then a year later, median sale price dropped down to 832,000 with 74 days on average on the market to sell, guys. And to make matters worse over there, people are just not renting Airbnbs as much anymore. The economy has slowed down tremendously, like we talk about all the time here on the channel. And many people's occupancy rates are way down. Even last year during the Super Bowl, there was that huge debacle with Airbnb where they, they had all these Airbnbs empty over there. Where was it? In Arizona, I think. And nobody was renting them. And that was during a Super Bowl time. You know, big touristy time. And now we're already a year later with the next Super Bowl right around the corner probably going to happen again. So even if you're one of the lucky ones that still has an active available rental license to do short-term rentals in Palm Springs, your revenue and occupancy are down significantly. That's another part of this picture, guys. Like 
you know, where is still doing good right now? Where are people flocking to? You know, even here in Florida, which seemed like, you know, the housing market here seemed like unstoppable, things have slowed down significantly here to the point where we're already seeing price declines in a lot of different areas across the state. So people have been saying, oh, it's, this is never gonna happen, it's never gonna happen. It's happening right now. So one thing that the city's doing as a compromise because people are so upset about this is they're offering a junior vacation rental certificate that anybody can get, even if it's in a capped neighborhood, it costs you $642 and allows homeowners to rent out the property six times per year with a maximum of 28 days each time. So basically it lets you rent out your property for almost six months out of the year. So that's not too bad if you wanna use it as like a second home, I suppose, but if you're trying to buy it solely as an investment vehicle to turn a profit, this isn't gonna work for you. And that's what they have figured out in Palm Springs. They have figured out that this is how we push this in, these investors out of our community, guys, and that's what they're doing. So talk about a housing crash. Palm Springs is seeing a housing crash as we speak because a lot of these neighborhoods that have capped values have dropped between 30 and 40 percent in value and a lot of homes that used to be 1.2 million are now selling for 800 grand over there and I would anticipate that this is just the beginning it's going to continue to get worse as interest rates remain high and most people that are looking to live there are not going to be wanting to shell out this kind of money guys especially if they know about this right if you know that this area is plagued with this problem right now and you're gonna have a lot of desperate Airbnb sellers coming on the market every day, you're gonna wait, right? You're gonna have your plenty of inventory to pick from with prices coming down. This is a dream scenario for anybody who's looking to live and buy a house in Palm Springs right now. And I just love hearing these stories, guys. I love seeing these people get gouged that thought that they were just gonna make a ton of money you know i just love hearing about this because this is a real win for all these people that have been struggling to buy a home over the past couple of years because all the cash investors have priced them out well now these guys are getting what they deserve and they're they're getting hit hard guys and listen i i am and have been a real estate investor in the past and i think that you know, investors deserve this. You know why? Because things have gotten too far out of control. It has gone from, you know, trying to provide a modest place for somebody to live and turn a modest profit into, you know, this crazy speculative game that has blown the price of housing completely out of proportion to the level where people are sleeping on the streets because of it. And judging by a lot of the comments that you guys have left me over the years, I would imagine most of you are pretty happy about this too. So consider this a win, celebrate on it, have a drink and toast to the housing crash in Palm Springs, California. <laughs> Can't wait to see which area is gonna fall next. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, Check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.